If you're trying to generate leads with Facebook ads, whether it's sending people to a free opt-in like a cheat sheet or a checklist, maybe it's to a webinar or even a quiz. If you're trying to get people to sign up to an email list from Facebook ads and you're getting lots of clicks, but not many conversions, then this video is going to help you fix that. I'm going to walk you through the five main reasons why clicks don't turn into conversions or leads and what you can do to fix it. We'll start with the most common problems and then we'll work through to the ones that are less common but still just as capable of completely derailing a conversions campaign. So not only will this video be helpful to you right now, but it's also a great checklist to work through every time you start a new conversions campaign or a campaign where you want to generate leads. And for that reason, I've created a downloadable version for you, which you can grab in the description below. So make sure you go grab that after you watch the video. Now let's talk about the first reason why clicks might not be turning into conversions. And that's because you might've chosen the wrong campaign objective. The campaign objective that we choose actually tells Facebook what we want to get from our advertising campaign. So if you were to, for example, choose a website traffic campaign, then Facebook is going to send you website traffic. It is not necessarily going to send you conversions. So by choosing the traffic objective, you tell Facebook, hey, I want people to click my ad and visit my website. Facebook will then go and show your ad to people that it knows are likely to click. It will not show your ad to people who are necessarily likely to convert. So by choosing the traffic objective, what ends up happening is you get exactly what you've told Facebook you want. You get traffic. You don't get what you really want in this case, which is conversions or leads. So the way to solve this is simply by choosing the conversions objective when you set up your campaign. As soon as you do this, if you're running traffic campaigns, you are going to notice a big jump in the number of conversions that you are getting from your ads, simply because Facebook now knows that you actually want conversions and that is what it's going to get for you. Now that said, one thing you're going to notice is your cost per click will increase, but your cost per conversion, which is the most important metric in this case, is going to go down significantly. And that is what you want. Now, in order to use a conversions campaign, you're going to need to track those conversions. And for that, you need to make sure that conversion tracking is set up properly. And if you're not sending all of that conversion information back to Facebook, then it's not going to be optimizing your campaigns as well as it otherwise could. So this is really important. And there are actually four things you need to get right if you want your conversion tracking to be as good as it can possibly be. The first thing is probably the one you've heard of and it's the Facebook pixel. You need to make sure you have the pixel set up on every single page across your website and every page you're running ads to and you need to make sure that you have conversion tracking set up on the pixel as well. I prefer to use standard events to do this. Now everything I'm going through in this video, so from mentioning the pixel just now to all of the other things I'm going to mention as we go through, some of them are bigger topics like setting conversion tracking up and the pixel and everything else. Now I'll include links in the description to other videos that go in depth into each of these topics because otherwise this would end up being an hour long video unnecessarily. So if you need to go into any of these topics in depth, simply go down to the description, find the video you need and away you go. Okay, so the next thing after the pixel and your conversion tracking is the conversions API. Now the conversions API is actually another way to send your conversion events back to Facebook. So the pixel is one way to send that back. But there are some problems with that, including things like ad blockers being used in browsers and some cookie tracking being blocked by particular browsers and settings as well. So if that pixel gets blocked, then the pixel is ineffective. The conversions API helps you still send those conversion events back to Facebook because it does it via a server instead of via the Facebook pixel. And Facebook actually recommend always using the conversions API alongside the pixel. Now I recommend it as well. So make sure as part number two of conversion tracking, you set up the conversions API. Step number three for your conversion tracking is to make sure you have aggregated event measurement set up or AEM. Basically what that means is for the domain where your conversions are happening, you need to go in and prioritize all of your conversion events on that domain. So go into AEM, make sure you've got that all set up and you've got your conversions prioritized from highest all the way down to lowest. 
And then on top of that, when you set up your ads, make sure you go down to the bottom inside the ad setup and you've chosen the domain where you expect your conversions to occur. If you don't do this, again, it's not going to track your conversions properly. So make sure whenever you set up an ad, you scroll to the bottom, you check that the domain is where the conversions are actually occurring. And then the final piece of this conversion tracking puzzle, which I know is a mess now with iOS 14.5 and the privacy changes, but the last bit is to make sure you use offline events. So offline events, again, it's another way of sending conversion events back to Facebook. So there are a few ways to set up offline events. My preferred way is through Zapier or Zapier. I never know how to say that. But setting that up gives you another way to push that conversion data back to Facebook. So moving on to number three, which is a lack of congruence between your ad and your landing page. Basically what it means is your ad and your landing page don't actually match. And that could be either the copy. So what you're saying in the ad doesn't match what it says on the landing page. It could be the look and feel or the design of the ad versus the landing page. So if the ad has a particular look and a feel, let's say it uses a particular color palette, particular fonts and particular design style, but then the landing page is totally different then that's not congruent either. And what happens in that situation is obviously the user sees the ad, they click, and then they feel like they're in the wrong place because now all of a sudden the whole look and feel and the aesthetic is completely different. And you don't want that because what happens then is people simply close that browser window and they move on to the next thing. The same happens, as I said, with the ad copy. If they read an ad and it promises them something in particular and then they get to the landing page and what's there doesn't match what was in the ad, then of course, what are they going to do? They're going to close that window, move on, keep scrolling through Facebook. You need to make sure that what you're promising and what you're saying you're going to give them or deliver matches what the landing page says they're going to get as well. I know it seems pretty obvious, but you would be surprised how often I see ads and landing pages that just don't gel in terms of what they're saying in one place versus the other. And the other piece of this is that the contents or the expectation set by the ad needs to then be delivered upon on the landing page. So here's a quick example. Let's say you have an ad and the ad says, click the link and watch the video for free. Well, when the user reads that, the expectation is that they'll click the ad and they'll be able to watch the video, whatever video that is, immediately. But if they get to the landing page and find out that it's a webinar registration page and it actually asks them to enter their name and email and click sign up before they're able to watch the video, well, that's a mismatch in expectation. They thought they were going to click the ad and watch a video, but instead they have to click the ad, sign up, and then watch the video. And that mismatch is going to result in most people simply closing that window and leaving. You need to make sure that you say in the ad, if it's a webinar sign up, click here and sign up now. Or if it's a quiz, click here to take the quiz, for example, so that the expectation matches what's on the landing page. Speaking of landing pages, the fourth reason for getting lots of clicks, but not many conversions, is poor landing page design. And that could be many different factors. And depending on all of those different factors, well, that kind of determines how big of an impact the poor design has on your overall conversion rate. Specifically, a few things to really check for. Number one, you need to make sure that the copywriting on your landing page is really good. You want short, sharp, effective copy on that landing page. It has to read really well. It has to get directly to what it is the user is going to get. And it has to have a clear call to action explaining what they need to do in order to get that thing. If you can't do a good job of explaining to the user what the benefit is to them of opting into this thing and what they need to do in order to get the thing, then it's going to be hard to convert people. The next thing you need to check with your landing page is that it's visually compelling. It's not 1993 anymore. People have certain expectations on the internet. If it looks terrible, then people, again, they're not going to convert. So you need to make sure it's visually appealing. A couple of quick questions to ask yourself in order to determine, well, is it visually appealing? Because I know this is subjective, but one question to ask is, does the design of this page make it easy for the user to read and digest the information that's on there? Because a pretty design is one thing, but a functional design is a whole other kettle of fish and it's actually more important. You want a design that looks good, but more importantly, actually allows for easy readability and easy usability of the page. 
And then secondly, is your call to action clear and easy to see? You'd be surprised how often I see pages where the call to action button itself is buried away, it's hard to see, it's difficult to know where to actually click. So make sure that is clear and easy as well. Another thing you should really make sure on these landing pages is your call to action is above the fold, meaning people don't have to scroll down to find the button to click to opt into your email list. You do not want that buried halfway down your big long landing page. You want it right at the top so people can read the headline, they read the subheadline. The copy is so good that those two things convince them to then click the button that's directly below them and opt in. Make it easy. And the next thing I'll say about your landing page is you really need to make sure that page speed is good. So what I like to do is go to gtmetrics.com, run the URL through that tool, and it will give me an analysis of how good my page speed is. But even more importantly, it will tell me what I need to improve on. So it will tell me what needs fixing and how to fix that. But look, at a minimum, the best thing you can do is one, resize all of your images down to the minimum size that you actually need. So if you've got images on your page that are 2000 pixels by 2000 pixels, then the browser is going to load those big images and then shrink them down to whatever size it is displaying them as. You need to reduce the actual size of the images to the size that they're displayed at, which is going to be much, much smaller in most cases, and then upload them that way because that's going to make the image size much smaller. Then you need to compress the images. So I like to go to a tool called Tiny PNG, upload the images, it will compress them for you, and then take that and upload it to your site. Just by doing those two things, you're going to make your site a lot smaller in terms of size, and that's going to make it load faster. The third thing you can do to speed up your site is just remove unnecessary content. If you've got unnecessary stuff and it's a big long landing page, remove it. And if you're on WordPress, make sure you're using a caching plugin or caching, however you decide to say it, and a CDN as well, because that's going to dramatically improve your page speed. Now, just on the WordPress topic of conversation there, my preferred option is actually to use a dedicated page builder. I prefer Unbound because it's just really quick and easy to use and the pages load super fast. WordPress, because it's such a big platform, there's a lot of overhead there. Their pages tend to load slower than something like Unbounce because it's dedicated and it's clean and that's their number one thing they're focused on is good, fast landing pages. And I'll link to them below in the description if you want to check out Unbounce too. And then on the topic of landing pages, this one kind of surprises me that I still see it, but it does come up surprisingly often and that is landing pages that aren't optimized for mobile devices. So because you're advertising on Facebook and or Instagram, most of the users there are accessing the platform via mobile, the vast majority in fact. So if you're running ads on Facebook or Instagram, most of the traffic is going to be coming from mobile devices. And what that means is from a landing page perspective, you should be designing your landing page for mobile first. But most people still design for desktop and they make sure their landing page looks really pretty on a desktop. And then the mobile side of things is kind of secondary and they don't really pay much attention to it. It should be the opposite. And so the way to cater for mobile first is one, make sure that at a minimum, when somebody loads your page on a mobile device, they can see the headline and the subheadline right there very clearly. They're not wrapped awkwardly or they're not cut off. And then they've got the call to action button right there above the fold. That is really, really important. Another thing that you really should check is that when people click that button and the pop-up appears to enter their name and email, that that pop-up actually looks great on the mobile device. It's not cut off, it's not running over the edge, they don't have to scroll across to read it all. That is surprisingly common and you need to make sure that that works correctly. And I just went over this, so I won't dive into it in detail again, but of course, being on a mobile device, people could be out and about, not on Wi-Fi. So those fast loading pages are really important here as well. Now, I know I've been talking about landing pages a lot because they are a massive component of this. And if you want to learn more about how to put together a great landing page, including the copy and everything, I've got a video right here that you can check out that will show you how to put together a really good high converting landing page. So make sure you check that one out next. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.